Good evening. I'd like to uh, call to order the uh, Jasper Planning Advisory Committee for August the 12th, 2013. Uh, we will be stand and be led by the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Jim Dorn, followed by the invocation by Mr. Al Keys. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Merciful Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to come and to discuss the, the business of the city of Jacksonville. Lord, give us wisdom as we ponder over uh, the business of this evening. And Lord, that we would make whatever decisions that need to be made, we would make, make them, Lord, uh, for the good of the city as a whole. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Welcome you know, to the meeting tonight, and those viewers, we welcome you also to be here. We don't have a, a long agenda tonight, so uh, we'll go we'll ahead and get started. So I need a motion for the approval for the agenda for this evening, please. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Spring and second by Mr. Mr. Williams. Benny. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, we need a review and approval of the minutes from last month's meeting on July the 8th, 2013. Is there any uh, corrections or uh, additions, please? I move that the minutes be approved. Second. Okay. So we have a motion by Mr. Keyes, second by Mr. Spring to approve the minutes from last month's meeting. Those in favor, raise your hand, please. Great. Thank you very much. Um, City Council updates. Councilman Bob Warden. Good to Thank see you, me. sir. Thank you. Good to be back. Sorry I missed you last month. But I saw in the minutes that uh, that I didn't miss a whole lot of time. There was, was almost a record. It may have been a record, a uh, short one. Uh, nothing really to report. Uh, of course, you're getting the, the weekly staff reports, uh, but nothing other than, than that So, okay. at this point. Great. All right. Thank you. Mr. Warren. Good. I see there is no old business for this evening, so we'll move on into the new business. We have a request for a conditional use permit and site plan for a Jacksonville VA outpatient clinic on Henderson Drive. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Advisory Board. You have before you a request submitted on by Parker and Associates uh, for a conditional use permit and site plan application for a proposed 10,731 square foot building that would be the future home to Jacksonville VA outpatient clinic. You notice the location on the vicinity map before you on the screen. This is the aerial photography of the site uh, with the Gold's Gym. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Wells Fargo to the that's their financial mortgage office. Uh, this track is mostly vacant now, but if you go further northeast on it, will be the new uh, Patriot 12 Cinema. The property is zoned conditional use at B1, therefore it's before you for recommendation. Um, the majority of the properties along this side of Henderson Drive are also zoned conditional use B1. Uh, the Western Forum track across Henderson Drive is zoned B1 straight out. And then the properties in the Shilsky Office Park and to the north of it in this area back here are our office and institutional and B1 in this area. Before you on the screen is the site plan submitted for this project. As you'll note, they won't be utilizing the entire site. Um, there is one condition on this property, on this there is one recommended condition by staff, uh, and that's to adhere to the TRC comments, which the one outstanding is to present a recombination plat that would com combine the four par parcels involved into one single parcel of ownership. Mm -hmm. I know the question will come up, so I'll answer it. They will be utilizing existing stormwater bond. Great, John. No. Actually, I'm sorry. Utilizing the existing That's yes. right. Yes. They'll be, they'll be utilizing the existing stormwater pond in the rear of the site. 
staff is recommending approval of this request with findings of fact A through G being found in the affirmative and again with the conditions found in the staff report related to the TRC comments. I'll be happy to address any questions that you may have. I have a general comment question. Uh, as you look at the entrance uh, to the um, proposed site, I notice there's going to be two driveways, both in and out. Uh, it appears to me that uh, the driveway closest to um, uh, closest to Gold's Gym is awfully close to their driveway for the proposed clinic. Is that why those drive that one driveway is going in at an angle is, instead of going in straight? No, I, I don't believe the angle is the reason for, for, with its proximity to the other one. Um, driveways on their own parcel ha only have a 10 foot separation from the property line. Uh, however, driveways on the same parcel must be 50 feet apart in the B1 zone. Um, and this site is wide enough that they would be allowed the two full access drives and DOT is already um, given their initial approval. They're just waiting for the city to approve the site plan. Um, John, um, John Parker from Parker and Associates may be able to enlighten you on why the angle is there. Okay. One other follow on question to yes, that. Uh, at what point does the turn in lane start? Is it alongside this across from or does it start at that point at all you know there's a turning lane that's been extended are oh, you talking about the new one going yeah. out, out to going um, out to, out to western? western yeah uh -huh. it, it starts just after the goal if i recall correctly it starts just after the gold's gym um driveway oh, right about where the city yeah right in there right in the, about there yeah as you go from Gold's Gym into the front of the dry cleaners up to the BP. Yeah. Okay. Sir, could you <laughs> address the configuration of that driveway as compared to? Actually, I can't. I don't know why it's that yeah. way. Um, I just noticed it before I left my office to come here. And so I really do not know why that driveway is angled. I thought that it was because of trying to get a certain distance between this driveway and the Gold's Gym driveway. And I think that may be what it is. Uh, we may have been trying to, uh, to get a specific distance. It may have been requested by DOT, but I don't know for sure. Very well could also be avoiding some sort of a power pole that would be rather difficult to move. Yeah. That's, that's something else uh, uh, that could be, or a fire hydrant could be in that location. There is a power pole that shows in the area of the, um, near the property line, but I'm not sure exactly mm -hmm. what's in this location. Sorry, I cannot answer that question. But I just both noticed left and it. Right, both a left and right turn in and out of that driveway as well? They are both full access drives. And uh, we talked with DOT early on, and DOT did not see that the traffic generated here would warrant uh, turn lanes for this specific use. But that was one of the things that we uh, did at the very beginning, before we started the site layout, was talk to DOT about uh, turn lanes. Okay. The area in back of the building and the driveway, what is that going to be? possible future expansion to this clinic. So there, it, it could enlarge uh, some additional parking, possibly an extension of the building out the back, but they're not sure at this time if they need that additional space. John, it looks like most of the buildings on Henderson Drive are set back quite a distance from the road. And this one almost seems like it's 40 or 50 feet forward of the road and all the other buildings around. Is there some reason that isn't? Trying to preserve that addition, that space in the very back for that potential future expansion. I think it would be the only building on the whole street that's that, is that close, wouldn't it? Uh, it's probably 20 or 30 feet closer than the Wells Fargo building. If you look over to the side, we show that location of that building. Mm -hmm. And you are... If you look 
Most of the parking lots are at least a full bay of parking for many of the other buildings. Can you go back to the area? That's correct. Right. Can you go back to the area? I got one question. When they take the sidewalk that we've already put down there going to going up uh, Henderson Drive, would this building take the sidewalk that's already no. placed? No, the, the sidewalks are there and there is a full bay of parking with parking that that fronts Henderson leaving the sidewalk a full two-way drive aisle and then a row of parking before you get to the walkway that fronts the the building itself okay. if, you look if you look close I'm sorry that's what I was gonna say if you look at the aerial here it looks like that the Wells Fargo is just further back than everywhere else as they've got a double bay um, parking facility where everybody else has a single. So I think that's the lawyer's yeah. office that is just yeah, below line. Wells Fargo and we're probably in line with that building. Kind of give us an idea about where no, excuse part, me, John. part of the building is going to be. So if you kind of carry this Okay, the, they have basically a two-way drive aisle and parking on both sides and then the building. So if you carry this line on down, they're basically following the same line. It's just the Wells Fargo is further back because they've added parking here in, in between, whereas all of these just have one row out front. Does that make sense? I have a question. Um, is there, I noticed on your plan this did not have any uh, parking lot connectivity with the other lots was that for a specific reason or uh, those other lots are not designed for connectivity okay that might be for security reasons too but it, since it's a, uh, a government complex I mean, looking at the plans interconnectivity certainly could be achieved but you're adding additional impervious surface to connect it over um, I mean, I think based on the access easements referenced in your Exhibit E, that you know that that may be a possibility. And, and the only I'm reason I bring that up is well, maybe, yeah, mm -hmm. well, is that you know, connectivity is a good idea if there are places you want to go from there. If there's no place you would reasonably expect people to want to go after the VA clinic, then the connectivity is you know not well, not very useful. As some of the board members may recall, when the area was rezoned to CUB1, they had the driveway conditions all up and down Henderson Drive. And this site complies with, they meet the 100 foot spacing between driveways. Um, there's a shared driveway access point, but, but keep in mind some of these other are two lots or one lot, this is taken up four lots. So normally you would have had two bu buildings on these four lots they would have shared a driveway in essence they're doing it it's just one lot that's twice three times the size of the other lots can we go back to the plan please can we go back to the plan please thank you i think that we could there is the possibility of the of connecting to the right side as you look at the drawing if you felt that was necessary I'm not sure not that sure. these maybe. people want to connect to a, right. to the Wells Fargo know, Financial with, Institute with the VA clinic, with, a with VA the medical clinic. clinic. There might be some specifications they set for saying just for security since you're dealing with retired veterans and military personnel. Possible. I think, I think another option would be to go down to one driveway, which would be the one closest to the middle of the property versus two. That way you limit the number of driveways on Henderson. If you look closely, you can see where the, the access easement was um, for when they platted the subdivision and spaced the driveways out. If you look here on the plans, this is the shared access point. The idea was that there would be a driveway here that would service, service that whole area. So, I mean, in essence, that one driveway meets that criteria because it's right here. I mean, it's over a little bit. And then they meet the spacing per the rezoning and per DOT and the city zoning. 
So they basically proposed another one since they complied with that. They met the standards. Uh, let me throw this out too, because I'm, I'm just I'm now 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 that I see what's on the other side, I'm thinking again: Is Gold's Gym usually f a fairly crowded parking lot situation? Because I, I, I would hate to put it I would hate to put these people in a situation where the people at Gold's Gym filled up the parking spaces and the people at the the VA clinic wouldn't have access to parking. Well, there's an access e easement right here. So I think, as John was just talking about, that they could eliminate this driveway possibly and connect here so that the people would use the driveway here and here, not that they would connect here. I think this is a no. Yeah. Are you aware of the what, what the next building is down from Wells Fargo? I refresh my memory. The uh, Wells Fargo, the next building is... is uh, Oh, which direction? Going towards Western or Go, going back? back away from Gold's Gym. That was a, that was a law office. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure what you mean. Oh. It was Keller Williams. Williams says real estate. Okay. But now, when you asked the question about the connectivity, I'm sorry. When you asked the question about the connectivity, I thought you were talking about connecting inside, not eliminating <coughs> driveway, because I think the VA <coughs> clinic would really want these two driveways. Uh, on their property without their their people having to drive through Wells Fargo's parking lot uh, or through Gold's Gym uh, to get in and out of this particular site. I think that because of its use, they really need that direct access as much as practical. Hey, you, you're correct. My, my original idea was just a connectivity between Side, side to side. side side and I understand yeah. now why Gold's Gym is not a good idea to connect I don't um, think it's a good idea to connect to yeah. Gold's Gym and, and I'm not sure based on whether the businesses that are would be connected on the other side whether that would be a good idea now either depending on yeah I'm thinking you know someone comes to the VA clinic and then wants to go to some other business on Henderson try to keep them from having to get back out on Henderson and and make that left which is not an easy thing to do mm -hmm and go to some of the businesses that are further down if you you know looking at the map but, but the ones that they would be connected to are probably not their yeah not their place to go because it's kind of a little far away from Relo, some of the other places it's a long way from Relo, and and a long way from a number of the other medical facilities if they were thinking that they mm -hmm. would go to those <clears throat> both driveways as it's shown on the plan meet the spacing so if that's not a concern of the board but you would prefer to see interconnectivity. I mean, that's one of the things you could ask them to, you know, that the two driveways are acceptable, but can you make that cross connect or decide that it's not needed and leave it as it is? Did they consider like one driveway in and another uh, out? By our, definition, by our definition, those are two full driveways, so that would be two driveways. I think because the, the, it's being a clinic, Needs to remain private and have its own private drive. I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, like I said earlier, I'm sure the VA has, may have put some specs in there saying they want their own private driveways. You know, and they for, haven't told us for their patients. You know. They haven't told us not to connect specifically, but um, you may be very likely right about that. One, one other well, general. Yeah, Mr. Keys. Yeah. No, exactly. I can tell you that the Henderson Drive corridor, that was one of the main conditions on the rezoning back in whenever it was. I mean, it was before, it was longer than 13, 14 years ago. And if you look, the spacing, you know, two driveways on this four lot site still complies with what you see all the way down that yeah. street. Okay. You're dealing with, you know, twice the size of the development track that you see all the way down, you know, the road there. So. And there was pretty stri strict driver limitations put on the rezoning. So that is a, is a busy road at times, a very busy road. Uh, just a, a general question. Have you got to the point yet where you're considering uh, landscaping? Yes. The landscaping mm -hmm. is um, on one of the, it's not in your set of plans, but yeah. the landscaping uh, has been designed in accordance with the city standards. Yeah. Okay. And just, just throwing this out, development across the street 
is, is would, would there be a possibility sometime in the future that development across the street would uh, enable us to have some kind of a crossover? Uh, uh, is that too close for a signal? Uh, can you give is, me some is idea? Is it possible? I don't, are your plans across the street in concrete enough to know if there's going to be a full drive across from this site for the There Patriot? is uh, <coughs> in the TIA that was done across the street. There is a proposed drive that was placed generally in this location, uh, but it's been moving around quite a bit. Uh, not a site for a signal, but does have full turn lanes on the other side for right turn in, uh, but not specific, not, not a signal intersection anywhere in this general area. The primary access would probably be north or northeast of there, closer to or about halfway to western. Actually, two access points for the property on across the road. One about halfway to western and then one uh, somewhere close to across from this, but not set. So it's possible. So it's possible. Ms. Moore. I move that we approve the conditional use permit and site plan based on findings of fact A through D and found in the permanent conditions identified within the staff report. I'll second that. So we have a motion by Ms. Moore and a second by Mr. Spring. Are you ready for further discussion? That will combine his properties, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of this motion, raise your right hand, please. Is unanimous? Okay, all right, thanks. All right, uh, there's no other new business, so we'll move on to uh, reports. I have three items, Mr. Chairman. Um, number one, I've put some lapel pins at your place tonight as a board member. Um, each one of you, uh, we've given you one there. If you already have one and don't need another, uh, feel free to just leave it there and I'll, I'll uh, collect them. Uh, but if you don't have one, please have one. And number two, we mailed out on the 6th of August over 2,000 letters to all of the uh, residents in the ETJ area that City Council will be considering uh, removing from the ETJ on September the 3rd. And the county will likewise be sending out notifications to those uh, individuals in accordance with their protocol, the general statute protocol, uh, for them to establish zoning in the area the following night. So provided that council approves that request on the third, we will be 2,274, 76 parcels short uh, compared to today on the ETJ. So those areas would come out and the county would then have 60 days to assign countywide zoning, which they intend to do the following night. So city staff and county staff have been working together on on making that happen and, and that's why it's been a few months I remember we brought that to you I believe in April and we were going to take it to council in May but the county requested that we give them a little bit more time because you know once it's adopted you know that 60 day clock starts ticking and then there would be no zoning at, at the end of 60 days so we held off taking that to council and they'll see that on the third and the county will see it the following night so um, we've set up a telephone line that uh, rings